Hey everyone, this is Jess. Thank you for watching today's video where I'll be talking about speaker crossover design. Speaker crossovers are electronic circuits that do things like affect the frequencies that reach which drivers or compensate impedance and things like that. So the goal is uh, to make the sound coming out sound balanced. Uh, you don't want, let's say, you have a woofer and a tweeter uh, in one speaker. You don't want the overlap to be off, so either there's a notch or a trough uh, where they cross over and it might sound either too loud or blary or, or too muted or quiet. Uh, the crossovers should help pair your drivers and that is kind of what we're going to be doing today. Just walking through using the software and the concept behind designing it. So I'll be using the drivers that I picked out in my previous video, this Peerless GFC Cone Woofer and this Dayton Audio Aluminum Dome Tweeter. So what we'll be doing is taking a look at the some software that I used and it's really neat for Dayton Audio drivers that they include the FRD and ZMA data files. These are the frequency response and kind of the impedance or Z. You might see that for resistance or impedance. Uh, so these come with the files. Dayton drivers come with the files. And if you don't have a Dayton driver or don't have these files, you can do this little trick that I'll show you. Just go open up whatever manual you can find with whatever graphs you can find. This one happens to have both the impedance and the frequency response on the same graph, which can make it a little trickier, but still doable. So make it a good size, open up snipping tool and take a snippet of that graph. Next, you'll download a program, well, whichever one you want, but I downloaded something called FP Graph Tracer, and it has worked out really well. So I'll open that up, and this will help convert an image to the actual file type that we need. So we can just paste image from the snipping tool and we now have this graph that it will create for us. Uh, there's a few things to keep in mind. First, you need to move these border lines to the actual border of the graph. So we'll do that. And this just ensures that the numbers that it, it gives you are accurate. Uh, the next thing you want to keep in mind is that graphs can have different types of scales. So if you notice, for example, on the right, these are evenly spaced, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Those are evenly spaced, right? But on the bottom, 20, 100, 1000, 10,000, the spaces between each of these in between numbers even, these values are not evenly spaced. We have to choose something called a logarithmic scale. Um, and you can see that if we turn that off and we put our cursor somewhere that's easy to read, like this 170 mark kind of, and you look down at the lower left and we are getting 4,000 781 on the X graph and 70 or 39 on the Y graph. So there's a few things we need to change actually. Um, first, we'll switch this X axis to logarithmic. And now if we put that here, you can see that X is actually reading 100 like it should be. The Y graph is still wrong. That's not because it's logarithmic or not it's because you'll notice the y-axis is starting with the value of zero in FP Graph Tracer, but actually this graph that we imported has a value of 50 at the bottom here. 
And just to uh, clarify a little bit, you'll see this SPL on the left. These numbers on the left are for your frequency response, which requires the frequency on the x-axis and the SPL or the, the decibels, the sound pressure level, how loud it is on the y-axis. If we look on the right, this is used with the impedance or resistance, you know, it's measured in ohms. Uh, and so this requires the frequency again on the x-axis, but on the right we'll see that the y-axis is actually using the ohms here. And that is for this black line. This is the impedance or the resistance at a given frequency. And then these colored lines are the sound pressure level or the frequency response uh, of the speaker at a given frequency. So all that being said, first we're going to be doing the SPL. So we're going to put this to start at 50. We're going to do the frequency response first. And that means that uh, Y goes from 50 to 100 and X goes from 20 to 20,000. And that's what we have. And the X is set to logarithmic, Y is not. So now if we just put our mouse at this area, it should be uh, 185, 100 on the X axis, 85 on the Y axis. And that's what we're seeing there. And we might move this down just to make sure that it's in the right place. And let's check a second location just to make sure. So if we're tracing this red line, that should be about, uh, let's see, right here at the 10,000. Um, we'll, we should be seeing just over 85 or just around 85. And we are indeed seeing that when we go to the 10,000 area, it's about 85 on the y-axis, about 10,000 on the x-axis. So that just helps us confirm that we have it selected correctly. Now we want to choose the red line and all I'm doing is clicking and this program actually uh, kind of does the rest for you. So I click on the red line, FP Graph Tracer puts the series of points, which is really all this FRD and ZMA file is. It's a series of coordinates. And this just selects uh, hundreds of these different points along the line. And this one looks pretty accurate. So we'll just save this as peerless GFC woofer.frd. And then we'll know that it's the frequency response graph. And then we'll just click this black line and we'll make sure the y-axis and x-axis are set correctly. So x hasn't changed, y has changed. We need to go from zero to 100 now. So we'll set that on the y to be zero to 100. Let's just check a few places. So right at 100, we should see about 10 ohms. If we go all the way up here, about 10,000, we should see around 20 ohms. And that looks good. And again, all I did was click on this black line. It read that well enough. So we'll just save this. And we'll change this to a .zma now. And we'll name it peerless GFC woofer .zma. Perfect. Now, as mentioned, the Dayton Audio Tweeter already had those files. So we've just saved those and now we will open up the next program and kind of show how we could use software to help us design the circuit. And I'll be using XSIM. Again, there are different choices, but this is what I used. Um, when I designed the size of the box and some of the, some of the aspects, I used WinISD, but for circuit design, I'm using XSIM and we can add a driver and right click on it and choose tune and I'll name this peerless GFC woofer and you can actually add the data to make this program work um, and, and kind of show you calculate the sort of 
results you can expect. Again, is this going to be perfect to real world? Uh, no, but it's very helpful and will probably get you close enough to what you need. So we'll just navigate to the location we saved it and choose that FRD file. And then it automatically saw that there was a ZMA file in that location and added that for us. So now we have this speaker saved and I will actually uh, right click and well select it first, right click, copy and paste. So now we have two of them. And we can see that one of them is labeled S1, one of them is labeled S2. So that's kind of how we'll be able to distinguish them on the graphs, which we can add when we go to the curves and we have frequency response and impedance. We can go to the curves of each of them and we can choose S1, S2, or S1 driver only, S2 driver only. Uh, the difference there is that S1 driver only is showing you the kind of graph regardless of the circuit. This is the vanilla, you could say. This is the driver graph without any of the calculations that this circuit will provide. Um, now, if we add it as S1 right now, and we'll choose red, it won't show anything. Why is that? Because we don't actually have it hooked up to any electrical circuit. No current is flowing through that, so there's no graph to display. Same thing down here. If we choose S1 driver only, we'll see pretty much what was uh, given to us straight from the driver. And we'll change this scale so we can read it a little bit more easily. 20,000 is good, so the frequency we see is fine, but the vertical scale, um, let's change to 20 ohms. And now we can see on the left here, it's showing the impedance in ohms, and along the x-axis, it's showing what frequency that impedance is. So this may look very similar to what we saw when we were uh, modifying and saving this file. This is just the vanilla resistance or impedance that this driver has regardless of the circuit. Same thing up here, we see that this graph uh, it's starting from 100, so keep that in mind. Right now it's just showing from 100, the graph just as we have it apart from any circuit. Now, the next thing we'll want to do is add the tweeter. So we'll add another driver and we'll right click and tune. And this one we'll just name Dayton Aluminum Tweeter. And let me find where this one was saved. It might be in downloads here and we'll just need to extract the file. First, I'm doing this on another screen, and once we have this, there we go. All right, so now we can just open this, go to this folder I just created, and we have the, uh, well, a lot of data actually, but what we're looking for is the FRD. We'll do it at the zero degree axis response. In other words, the on axis response, uh, just so we'll match the woofer. And that's what we're caring about right now. The ZMA file was in a different folder, so it wasn't automatically added. We'll go to the ZMA folder and then grab that file. Okay, well, the program crashed on me. So I'll reopen it and I've already shown you how to add the drivers and the files to them. So I'm actually just going to open a, an example two way that comes with this XSIM to kind of walk you through using it. So as you can see, um, we have the drivers, the crossover components, and then these ground symbols, which you can just think of as the return wires to the amp. 
this just makes the circuit diagram cleaner, um, but you have a wire going to the speaker and then everywhere you see this ground is the wire that's going to go back to the, the amp. So with that being said, let's add the graphs that we want to look at. Um, as mentioned, driver only is the, is the graph without taking into account the circuit. So we don't need those. We'll add the S1, S2, and we'll leave the system. So that blue line is the sum total frequency response of this whole circuit. You can see that at a certain point, the crossover point, uh, this blue line is above the orange or red lines. That's because the red line, the woofer, and the orange line, the tweeter, are both producing sound at the same frequency. And when you have more than one speaker producing sound, it gets louder. They add up to produce a, a louder sound. So this blue line is the sum of the orange and the red. And that's the kind of the idea behind crossovers, at least for these types of circuits. You want to blend the woofer and the tweeter. Now you could have three different drivers um, and it could be more complex or less complex, but this is the idea to get that blue line looking how you want and more to the point to get the sound of the speaker sounding how you want. Now S1 is the woofer and you can see that uh, we have a two, uh, well second order crossover. So two components um, and a resistor, um, but we have the inductor and the capacitor that kind of makes up a second order low pass filter. The inductor is in series and then the capacitor is in parallel. And if we change one of these values, you can just watch this red line, which also will affect the blue line. I'll just change it from 0.68 millihenries. And you can see that we're kind of rotating this line to make it quieter sooner. And it changes the sum total. That blue line is now looking pretty sad there in the middle. So we'll put that back. And this is just to show how handy a software calculator can be because you might use uh, a book or whatever to show you the optimal crossover, but it might not be exactly what you want. And with software like this, you can kind of fiddle around and adjust what you want and see what the results will be. And that's about it. I don't want to bore you for too long. Um, again, I'm not teaching you how to make the perfect crossover or your specific crossover, but learning from a book like Speaker Building 201 or websites or whatever will help with the equations, the values, and the layout of the circuits. And software like this will help with the design and fine tuning. And yeah, once you, once you do that, and have the values that you need, buy the components, hook them up, test them before you <laughs> solder them. You should just use like alligator clips or whatever you have. Don't solder the whole thing together. Don't screw it into a box, whatever. Just hook it up and connect it to your speakers and make sure that you don't have your wires crossed, literally. Uh, make sure that everything works well it won't sound exactly the same since it's not in a box but it'll be a good proof of concept and make sure that uh, you don't waste time having to redo things uh, i think that's about it but if you have any questions leave them down below i hope you found this video at least somewhat helpful um, and that you watch the rest of my videos in which i actually build my speakers thank you guys have fun